Hi class, this is Brian, and we're here to go over module three of Applied Statistics. We're talking about confidence intervals, uh, introduction to confidence intervals. Inference that we do in statistics can be generally categorized as estimation and uh, decision making. And so estimation involves trying to come up with a good guess of some parameter in the population. And the first parameter we're going to talk about is the some proportion of the population. So some unknown, unknown value P. We already talked about how if, if certain um, conditions are satisfied, then the central limit theorem uh, tells us that this random variable uh, P hat, this is the uh, sample proportion, uh, would follow a, a, a normal distribution. And the mean of the distribution will be P, the unknown population proportion, and the standard deviation of P hat, also known as the standard error, is given by this formula. So if we're going to make an estimate of P, the best point estimate, a point estimate is just a single number that is our guess, uh, would be to just do a sample and calculate a sample proportion and use a sample proportion. So p hat is the best point estimate, but of course we don't expect uh, to, the sample proportion to be exactly correct. It's probably wrong, in fact. In fact, we can be almost guaranteed it's wrong. Um, but we can give an interval, so give a little bit of margin of error on either side of p hat, that will give us a range that we can be pretty confident that within this range we have the correct value somewhere in there. So that's what we're talking about with a confidence interval. We'd say say an X percent confidence interval, say like a 95 percent confidence interval, we'll give a lower bound and an upper bound and we will say we have about a 95 or, or precisely 95 percent probability that between these bounds you will find the population parameter, so the proportion. Okay, so the idea would be, uh, so say we give, we do a sample, we calculate a confidence interval for, uh, for P, the proportion in the population, and we, the lower bound is 0.24 and the upper bound is 0.36. So we would say that we're 95% confident that within the interval, uh, that the interval 0.24 to 0.36 surrounds P, the proportion. Um, in other words, if we were to uh, do a sample again and again and again, and every time we do a sampling, a sample of size, say, like a sample size of a 50, right? We do a, a, a whole bunch of, a sequence of these samples from the population. Every sample of 50, we calculate a confidence interval, do it again and again and again and again. Well, 95% uh, and of the in theory 95 percent of these confidence intervals we we uh, calculate will be on the money so to speak uh, so five percent of them are going to be just wrong they're either going to be too high or going to be too low um, but uh, 95 percent of them are going to be right so that's what we mean when we say we have 95 percent confidence in our interval now the formula is uh, essentially, you take your point estimate and you add or subtract the margin of error to get your upper or lower bound. That's the idea. So the margin of error is um, we have to go, the, the length of the margin of error is the product of two numbers. The, first of all, the standard error, and then this Z alpha over 2, which is just a way of saying how many standard errors do we have to go in order to get uh, uh, the right amount of percentage in the middle. So, um, for example, if we're looking at a 95% confidence interval, so uh, 1 minus 95% uh, or 1 minus 90, 0.95 is 0 0.05. That's how much probability is going to be left out in the tails, and the two tails are going to be uh, uh, equal to each other. So, one of them has alpha divided by 2, or 0 0.05 divided by 2. And so this z alpha over 2 is just the, the, the cutoff, the z score that cuts off 
alpha divided by two in the lower tail. So for a 95% confidence interval, that alpha over two is 2.5%. That's half of 5%. Um, anyway, uh, you can find those um, using using a probability calculator. And um, in fact, calculating the confidence interval itself can be done even more easily using StatCrunch. And there, I do demonstrations of it in my StatCrunch tutorial video. Uh, what you should know also is that um, the uh, sometimes you'll be asked to determine what sample size is needed in order to attain a certain margin of error. So um, if you're going to be, if we fix the confidence level at, say, 95% or 92% or whatever, and we fix the margin of error to be, let's say we want to have a two percentage point margin of error. So we fix that. If we have a previous, if we take this, this formula for margin of error and flip it around with algebra, then we get this n equals business, this n equals business formula. <laughs> now, uh, what you should know is that, you know, in this formula, if you fix this z alpha over two and the margin of error, and if we have a prior estimate of p hat, then we can plug that into the formula, and then we get the number for n. Of course, we have to round up to the nearest whole number n. Uh, we don't round down. We always round up to the nearest whole number. So if it came out to be 322.7, we would round up to 323, right? Um, if p hat is unknown, then this... We, we simplify the formula a little bit and we use uh, 0.25 in place of the p hat business. Um, and that is, in a worst case scenario, uh, a p hat of, of 0.5 is going to make the widest margin of error. So, um, or require the largest number of people, largest sample size. And so we'll just use that in a worst case scenario. Um, again, there's a tool in StatCrunch for calculating sample size required, and I go over that in my StatCrunch tutorial. So you don't actually have to know these formulas, but just know you can determine sample size based on a required confidence level and margin of error. Uh, and so a couple concepts that you should know, just generally speaking, keeping everything else the same, if we were to increase our sample size, the margin of error is going to decrease. Likewise, if we keep the sample size the same, but we increase our confidence level, go from say 95% to 99%, the effect on our confidence interval is the margin of error is going to get bigger. So in order, without increasing our sample size, if we want to increase confidence level, the only thing we can do is widen our confidence interval. We can't do it any other way. So if you want to get a smaller confidence interval, you can either increase sample size or you can decrease your confidence level. Both of, both of those will give you a smaller confidence interval. Okay, so when estimating mu or the population mean, uh, we're going to pretty much follow the same procedure and the same concepts will apply, it's just the formulas are going to be tweaked a little bit. Um, again, the central limit, if it applies, we will have a near normal distribution of for x bar and the mean of x bar is going to be mu and the standard error of x bar is going to be sigma over the square root of n. So anyway, the formulas for both of those are known and they were gone over, we gone over them in the last module. Uh, and again, if we gave a point estimate, so th the middle of our confidence interval, it's going to be x bar, the sample sample mean. And, um, of course, we would get an interval, and we're not going to use the normal distribution. I say we're going to follow a near-normal distribution, and specifically we'll use a t-distribution. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the t-distribution. Um, the t-distribution is similar in many ways to the uh, standard normal distribution. So in this picture, we see... A normal distribution is given uh, 
as the highest peak and the lowest tails. You can see in the, in the I guess I'll call it a burgundy color. And the T distribution has one parameter, which is degrees of freedom. So uh, the mean of the T distribution is always zero, um, but the, the, as we increase degrees of freedom from say one, two, five, twenty, the, the mode, the peak of the T distribution is going to be increasing, increasing, and increasing until eventually it reaches as the height of the standard normal distribution curve. Um, meanwhile, the tails, when they have only single, like one degree freedom, the tails are the widest. And as the um, degrees of freedom increases, the tails get thinner and thinner. So um, just generally speaking, you could think of the t-distribution as a way of being a little more cautious. We take some of the probability from the, from the center and we fluff it out into the tails to put a little more caution. Um, a t-distribution is used when we have a little bit more variability or it's possible that our sample could be a little more extreme because, say, it's a small sample size, something like that. We'll give a little bit more probability out in the tails to kind of compensate for that um, fact. Of course, there's more technical stuff going on, but that's the gist of it. Um, and also for our purposes, the degrees of freedom simply is the sample size minus one. Okay, so a sample size of 20 means the degrees of freedom is 19. Um, okay. So as long, so when does the, um, when can we use the central limit theorem for uh, use for this these confidence intervals for mean? Uh, okay, first of all, we need to have an independent random sample. We talked a little bit about that before. It just means you have to have you can't be just sampling, you know, all the same people in the same family. You have to t take a good sampling from the population as random as possible. You don't want the answers from one person to be influencing or influenced by answers from somebody else. Um, now, if the sample size is small and the, the kind of the threshold, the unofficial threshold we'll use is less than 30, um, the population really should be a normal population. We have to have no reason to think it's not a normal distribution for the population. Uh, if, however, the sample size is big and bigger than 30 individuals, um, then as long as it's not any bigger than 5% of the population, we're still in good shape. So that 5% was a, a check we had to give before as well. So, um, and that's really never going to be a problem for us. We're never sampling so much that it's more than 5% of the population. That's just, you know, the populations are usually too, way too big for us to bother with that. Okay. So back to the picture of a confidence interval, same idea that you've got um, point estimate plus or minus a margin of error. And the margin of error now is going to be a, uh, a T alpha over two times the standard error. And again, the T alpha over two, you can find those, those critical values for T from technology or whatever, but you can um, actually, all of these confidence intervals can be constructed uh, very easily using StackCrunch. And I again, I go over examples in the other tutorial, and I really suggest you watch that as well.